Welcome to the Dentamax Tip of the Week. This week's tip is going to be creating and sending a predetermination for a patient. We'll start by going to the patient's chart by clicking on chart and selecting our patient from our patient list. We'll go ahead and choose Tara Johnson and choose chart once again. You'll notice that Tara has a few planned items in her treatment plan already. What we want to do in order to send a pre-authorization or predetermination for these items is click on the ones we'd like to send. If you need to select multiple items, go ahead and hold your control button on your keypad and select the additional items that you'd like to send out. I'm going to go ahead and shrink some of these other options up so you can see the rest of this related information. And right here we have pretreatment claim of selected items. If you wanted to send a pretreatment claim for all of the planned items, you would just choose new pretreatment claim instead of the selected pretreatment claim items. We'll go ahead and click on that. One claim has been created. It did fail validation. Did we want to view it now? We'll go ahead and say yes. And here we have our predetermination or preauthorization. You can see in box one that this is not a statement of actual services. This is showing a request for a predetermination. We can click on the billing tab and see why this claim failed and it's needing some NPI numbers. We could go back and fix that down here at the bottom of the claim. We'll just plug some in right here because your claim will continue to fail validation unless we fill that out. Obviously, the best way of taking care of these NPI and tax ID numbers is to make sure that you have input the information under setup and provider setup. However, this pre-authorization form is interactive, so if you know it, you can type it right onto here just for the ease of getting this particular pre-authorization out a little more quickly. There's a few insurances out there that even though box one is selected that this is a request for predetermination, if they see a date next to a procedure code item, they may not recognize that this is a pre-authorization. So what we can do is just click on the date field and delete that out if that's a concern for you. Now the pre-authorization I'm sending out is for two crowns and two buildups. Obviously, to get the best information back from the insurance company, you may want to attach a narrative and an x-ray to this pre-authorization. You can do that through NEA if you've signed up with them. Otherwise, this remarks section will hold a narrative if you'd like to type it in here. Tooth number 12 has an MO fracture, requires crown and buildup to restore. The alternative to typing your remarks in here is to simply click Add Attachment. You can choose the doctor's clinical note as your narrative to send with this claim. We'll click Continue, and we've got one clinical note in here thus far. If this were in regards to the doctor's findings on number 12 and 18, you could simply click the Use box and attach that as your narrative for this pre-authorization. If you also had an x-ray you wanted to send with this pre-authorization, once again you could click on add attachment from your options bar, select which type of x-ray, we'll go ahead and choose an FMX, click on continue, and you have the option to either take a screenshot of an image you may have pulled up already, you can import an image file that you may have in your email or you can go to your Dentamax imaging which are x-rays you've taken from within the Dentamax imaging center. If you had any other attachments you'd like to send along with this pre-authorization as well you would simply go back to add attachment choose which kind of attachment a perio exam, FMX, or these other type of x-rays perhaps an EOB or coordination of benefits, intraoral photo and just choose which option applies, then select continue, and then you can just select the appropriate document or x-ray from there. Once you've updated all of the information on this pre-authorization, since it had previously failed authorization, we want to go ahead and validate this claim once again. And now we have a past validation message. So at this point, we're ready to send this pre-authorization out. We can click on claims. And I'd like to point out that in this window, the pre-authorizations show up with a grayish color on the line item. It's easy to see which out of these items are pre-authorizations. I'm going to go ahead and select Tara Johnson 
and it's a ready to bill pre-authorization. At this point, I could just click on send select e-claim. Now once you get the EOB back from the insurance company and you know what they're going to pay, you can go ahead and enter that authorization number back onto this claim form. So you'd go back to your claims window and depending on how many claims you have in here, you may want to type in the date that you sent that out or search by status build and then you're going to select mark pre-authorization received. This is the window where you want to populate your pre-authorization number that the insurance company sent you. And now out of the fee we build, we have an opportunity to enter in what the insurance company said they're going to pay. Once you're done entering that in, on our options bar we'll click save changes. That item ends up going into the completed category as far as of the primary status goes. Once you input the pre-authorization information, that item goes into the completed category. To change this from a pre-authorization to a statement of services that have been completed, you simply click this box here and it changes the status of the claim. You'll notice just below, here's our pre-authorization number that we entered in from the insurance company. And at this point, we could click Save Changes and from here, send the selected e-claim. As always, if you have any further questions about pre-authorizations or the dental claim form, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-704-8494. Thank you.